he is part of the recently announced squad for the US men's national team. We have two games in Europe coming up next week. Yunus Musa, the CM, the 17-year-old for Valencia. Weston McKenney, Tyler Adams, uh, Richard Ledesma getting the call up as well. That's in terms of the midfielders up front. Conrad De La Fuente from Barcelona. Josh Sargent, of course, from Werder Bremen. Pulisic included. Gio Reyna, we expect to win his first cap. Tim Weir trying to battle back from injury. It is a young squad for Greg Berhalter. More, more experience at the back, perhaps. Tim Ream and Matt Biazga, very familiar names. John Brooks, Reggie Cannon getting the call up. Serginio Dest, of course, now with Barcelona. It'd be interesting to see if Chris Richards gets the play. And then the three goalkeepers, Zach Steffen, Ethan Horthaf, and a new name, Chituru Adunze, who belongs to Leicester City. Let's bring in the former Leicester City. U.S. international goalkeeper Casey Keller. Casey, good to see you, sir. Uh, what do you make of this squad? Let's start with the, with the new name, uh, Yunus Mushu, a, a new name to most of us, I must admit, until the last few weeks. Uh, Greg Bohalter has uh, unearthed a, a potential diamond there. Yeah, very much so. I mean, Mushu is a guy that, you know, it was... Somehow, I mean, the, if the rumor's correct that his his mother was on vacation in New York and uh, gave birth, so <laughs> I guess the question mark for Burholter is how many Brazilian moms, how many Argentinian and Dutch, and can can they now go on vacation and uh, stock the uh, men's national team for the future? But uh, yeah, it's it's a crazy story. Uh, moved to Italy, uh, then moved to England and, you know, represented England at the youth level. But, you know, has has some choices to make coming up. Does he does he play with a very, you know, stacked English squad, maybe go to his parents' native land of Ghana? Or does he choose that uh, opportunity to play for the United States? And he's taken this chance to go look at the setup with Greg Berhalter and uh, see what's there for him. Yeah, and one of a, a cache of young players now plying their trade at the very highest level in uh, in in European football. Okay, so this is a, an entirely European-based squad, as you mentioned, uh, Musha, with previous experience with England under 18s. Uh, makes perfect sense, doesn't it, to try and get him? It's, this isn't going to attach him to the U.S. permanently. He, there will be no permanent attachment because it is only a couple of friendlies. But why not have a look at him? Well, and, and you do the first thing, and, and you you reach out to him, and is and is and, and see if he's interested. And obviously, he's interested because he's coming in. And it is it, it's no real commitment for him at this stage to in these friendlies. The the question mark will obviously come when there's a game that matters. That's a FIFA competition match, and then will he be willing to make that commitment or not? We saw that with with Dest that he was willing to make that commitment, and and so we'll. We'll keep an eye on this. First of all, we'll see. He's a young kid. He's 17 years old, and we'll we'll keep an eye on his career at Valencia, and we'll keep an eye on on those future international call-ups. Yeah, you imagine uh, Gio Reyna is one who will finally get to make his uh, his U.S. debut. Uh, <laughs> Casey, it's been a long time, hasn't it? They haven't, they haven't played a game since uh, I think it was February the first, the last uh, friendly game they played. So Wales and well, Panama well, I, are coming up. Go Adrian, on. I. I I love that you say finally for a, for a kid that's just about to turn 18. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that kind of tells you that he's, that he's obviously doing something right. And there's no question that Gio has brought in a, a ton of excitement for breaking into the, to the Dortmund first team and being as successful as he has been. And, and I know that Greg Berhalter is excited to get him involved in the squad and see if he can replicate some of those performances for Dortmund with the men's national team. And, and obviously there's a bright future ahead for Gio, not only for club, but for country. And, and, and this is a young squad. You mentioned it when you went through the roster and there's a, an, a number of, of young players uh, applying their trade at the highest level in Europe and other guys who are you know, kind of breaking into some younger squads into the second teams, either at Bayern, at Barcelona, and, and around some smaller teams. And it is exciting for Greg, particularly when you look at you know, the way the MLS schedule is shaking up and knowing that if players left their MLS teams with the COVID quarantines, they would miss the playoffs. So, so very interesting that, that Greg has this opportunity after a long layoff 
to really not only get some of these marquee European players, but also some of the younger, I say younger, because some of these marquee players are young, but, mm. but some of those younger players in some of the, the less known teams, leagues, and also the second teams for some big clubs and opportunity to come into the squad. Yeah, case okay, so average age of the squad, 21 years and 300 days. So, so it's, it is quite remarkable, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Greg, Greg Berhalter, I mean, there's a lot been talked about how this, this, this U.S. team is developing and, and, and the young stars in Europe. Do you think Greg Berhalter, I know you talk to Greg and I know you know him very well. Do you think he has a sense of what his strongest starting 11 is right now? And, and, and obviously plenty of players... Uh, that uh, might be available in the future and not going to be there on this trip. Yeah, I, I don't know how he can after he's not really had a squad for, for a year, right? I mean, mm. so I think that's the frustrating thing. If, if anybody who knows Greg knows that he's a, he's a complete workaholic and loves to be, you know, involved. And, and you know, he, he's been going crazy with, with not being able to get his hands on this team for – for so long and then even the, you know now when you finally do you're limited to the players that you can select uh, so yeah i mean it's frustrating so i don't think he knows uh, specifically but but obviously it, it's a chance to to get some guys in and not only have a look but also get some of those marquee players now we're going to have to you know wait and see what's the state of of, of christian pulisic you know, what's the state of Tyler Adams as well? Both players have, have struggled with injury. Uh, Weston McKinney got back into the side, the Juventus side, after coming out of the, the COVID, after being diagnosed with COVID and taking his quarantine. So, yeah, there are still some question marks on the marquee players as well for these two matches. And then let's also look at what's happening around Europe with all the lockdowns being implemented. And, and uh, I, I sent... You know, Greg had text a little over a week ago and we kind of conversed for a while just about, you know, were these games going to go on because of all the lockdowns that were happening? And so, you know, fortunately enough for him, there's the, you know, the pro sports uh, exemptions that they're able to call in and and fingers crossed that they're able to get these games and, and Greg will be able to have a look at these players. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.